are learning about a group of service members who were denied one of the nation's oldest and most sacred awards, the Purple Heart, and also the benefits that come with it. A CBS News investigation found that more than 30 troops whose injuries in Iraq appear to qualify them for the award are still waiting for it. They were hurt when their base was hit by an Iranian missile strike nearly two years ago. Our CBS News investigative team spoke with current and former soldiers on Task Force Scarecrow who are still waiting for the Purple Heart, and they question whether the politics of war is to blame. The person I was prior to, you know, a traumatic brain injury, is, he's gone. The pieces are all still there. It just... He's not coming back. Platoon Sergeant Dane Kasager was diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury, or TBI, after living through this. The January 2020 strike on al-Assad, a U.S. airbase in Iraq. It was Iran's revenge for the U.S. killing of General Qasem Soleimani days earlier. Is that the first strike? Yep, that was the first strike right there. And the largest ballistic missile attack against American forces in U.S. history. Eleven warheads, each weighing 1,600 pounds. Everything shook. The, the whole earth shook. It felt like an earthquake and then just pressure moving through your body. Almost two years later. These are my hearing aids. Kasager can no longer do his job as a drone operator. He suffers from a long list of ailments. Headaches. Yes. Memory problems. Yes. Vision and balance issues. Yes. My brain, it, it, it operates at a limited capacity all the time. Based on the Army's rules, the Iranian missile attack met the eligibility requirements for the Purple Heart. The attack was launched by a hostile foreign force and caused a traumatic brain injury with persistent impaired brain functions. But CBS News has learned Kasagar and dozens of other soldiers who appeared to qualify have not been recognized with the award and denied the medical benefits that come with it. Did your soldiers meet the criteria? Absolutely. Captain Jeffrey Hansen was Kasagar's superior officer and helped lead Task Force Scarecrow that ran armed drone operations. The Army regulation that explains the criteria for Purple Heart, it says it very clearly. It's not up for judgment. It's an entitlement, and it's something that is earned by injury. Show of hands, who's been diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury? We sat down with Hansen, as well as Michael Pridgen and Haley Webster, who sheltered in these bunkers meant to defend against small explosives, not missiles the size of a truck. Are you suffering? Yes. <laughs> I, I've had to be medically um, retired out of the Army because it feels like my brain is short-circuited, is how I best describe it. My wife will say I used to be so articulate, and now it's almost like a stroke patient. I have headaches four or five days out of the week. The soldiers we spoke with all lived through the same ballistic missile attack. But only Webster, who was medically evacuated, received the Purple Heart. Hansen said getting medevac became an additional requirement to qualify for the award. Is this how it's supposed to work? No, absolutely not. According to this letter, 56 soldiers in their unit diagnosed with TBIs were submitted for a Purple Heart. The soldiers told us only the 23 who were medevaced were recognized. What happened to the rest? We got no response. We actually were told to not ask that question. The messaging I was getting was just the political situation wasn't going to support more approvals. The soldiers said there was pressure to downplay the growing injuries to avoid a further escalation with Iran and avoid undercutting then-President Trump. I heard that they had headaches and a couple of other things, but I would say, uh, and I can report, it is not very serious. That, that was an indication of we don't want casualties right now, and Purple Hearts are an indication of a casualty. Last month, their commander urged the Army to reverse course and reconsider all soldiers who have not received a Purple Heart as a result of this attack. Is that something you ever want to earn? <laughs> Personally, it's something that my son can see as to why I, I am the way I am, why I change. Also diagnosed with a TBI, Corporal Jason Quittiqua did not receive the Purple Heart. Last month, the 22-year-old took his own life. He struggled, you know, like we all are, like I am. Kasager said they were part of a skeleton crew who stayed at the base to continue the mission. The soldiers told us they're speaking out so that every injured teammate who's eligible for the Purple Heart is recognized. Throughout my whole military career, I was always told that you know, we take care of soldiers, we take care of soldiers above all else. And, and it, 
it shocks me that we have failed to do that in this situation. A military spokesman told CBS News the evaluation for the Purple Heart is an apolitical process, and they are not aware of any directive for soldiers to downplay their injuries. The general who oversaw the award said standards were applied uniformly. But a day after we contacted the Pentagon, the Army confirmed it will initiate a new review for these Purple Heart awards.